hi there. Pioneer Peace Officer's Delegate? Yeah. Welcome to Los Angeles. J.J. Jackson. Are <laughs> you all right? Did you hurt anything? Just as fried. <laughs> Hiya, J.J. Dave says Casper, Wyoming. Well, this would have to happen in a place where everybody knows me. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's have a drink. Uh, don't you fret none, boy, you hear? That was my own dumb fault. <laughs> For Pete's sake, I might have known it. J.J. Jackson. <laughs> Oscar Shea, Fargo, North Dakota. Oscar Shea, Fargo, North Dakota. Oh, sure, how do I know Oscar? <laughs> Who curled your hair for you? <laughs> JJ, I'll buy you a drink. Or is that your problem? Yeah, I'll make it a beer. Hey, by the way, did you fellas notice that young lady when we came in? Ain't she something? <laughs> Isn't that something? I gotta see Eddie. Real sweet girl. Ain't she? <laughs> Sign a release form. Yes, sir. I'll have him do that right away. <laughs> I'll hold on. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me, but... Hey, Eddie! Hey, babe. I I'll call you right back. Like a taboo with an old shipwreck sailor? Oh, come on, Bobby. What's wrong? It's not a nice, warm island welcome. Look, I've been so darn busy. A customer fell down. He could have hurt himself. I'm supposed to help him. What customer? Who fell down? The white-haired man at the bar. Hey, there you go, J.J. If you think you can handle it, I think I can handle it. If I think I can handle it, why, well, you'll... Say, would you excuse me just a minute, Shay? I just happened to think of a phone call I promised to make. Operator, I want to make a long-distance call. That's area 311. And the Madrid number is 555-4800. Madrid County Sheriff's Office, Deputy DeVillo. Hello, Rudy. Hi, JJ. Hey, how's the convention, huh? Loud. Sam around? Well, no, he isn't. He, uh... OK, OK. Tell him I've just seen a face we've been after for three years. Hey, got news. JJ? Now, just, just take it easy, son. I said. Hang up. JJ?
punch him again. I'll hold on. Well, and he's just dropped out of sight. Finally got the manager to send someone up to the room. There's no sign of him. There's no sign of a struggle. There's... Hello. Yes? Well, just tell him to contact his office when he checks in. Thank you. A response to the page. Get me the L.A. police. He saw somebody we've been after for how long? Three years. All right, I want the cards of all the fugitive cases in the files. I already pulled them, been through the whole stack, and there's only two in the three-year bracket. Sam, LAPD on two, a Lieutenant John Gifford. Lieutenant, this is Sam Cade. Yeah, Cade. Lieutenant, I'm trying to locate a deputy of mine, J.J. Jackson. We're afraid he made a run into some trouble. In L.A.? Yeah, Hollywood, the Congress Hotel. They're having a convention out there. The Pioneer Peace Officers. Yeah, well, he's a member. You see, he called in a fugitive report, but he was cut off before he could give the name. Sheriff. Look, they're giving you the business. If I've gotten one complaint from the Congress, I've gotten a thousand. Horses in the lobby, pot shots at the chandelier. It's Jesse James' time. Now, just relax. He'll show up. This wasn't a gag, Lieutenant. Sheriff, listen to me, will you? My deputies disappeared, and I want them found. Now, if I haven't heard from you by 6 o'clock tomorrow, I'll be on the Desert West Airlines morning flight. Egan? What do you got? Two candidates, brothers, knocked over a jewelry store three years ago, killed the owner in cold blood, didn't even try to resist him. Grover and Bob Curtis. All right. All right. What did you expect me to do? Kill him right then and there? Man, I don't expect you to do nothing. I just drive the cars, remember? How'd you get him out of the hotel after you hit him? I walked him out. He was just groggy enough to look drunk. I don't know. Grove's the one that's going to be mad. So what else is new? That crazy husband of yours, he's been mad ever since the day he was born. Look, he recognized me. Look, why don't we just forget the job? and dump him on some street corner someplace and get out of here while we can. Now, wait a minute. What time is Grover due back? Eight or nine tomorrow. Okay, he's a big organizer. Let him decide. Maybe you have to ask the old guy some questions. Yeah, sure. Like, are there really pearly gates up there? Why? Is he dead? No. The way you whacked him, I don't think he's gonna make it till eight or nine in the morning. Take us downtown. All right. Oh, Sheriff, he called the hotel. When? A couple of hours ago. Told the desk clerk he'd met some friends. They'd all decided to go to Tijuana. Said he'd be back Monday. Sheriff Kate, Sergeant Broke. Hey, have you tried the Tijuana police? Yep. Nothing. He let my office know where he could be found. Even on a vacation? 
Even on a honeymoon. How about drunk? What? The word is your deputy Jackson had himself quite a ball last night. Bumped into a bus boy's cart and dishes flying all over the place. According to who? According to a whole room full of witnesses, most of them his friends. They say he was so drunk he could hardly walk. Well, I don't want to interview anybody who talked to him. Yeah, I thought you might. I asked them all to meet us downtown. Gifford, J.J. called my office last night and said he saw a man that we've been looking for for three years. Now, that doesn't sound like a falling down drunk. Uh, you know your deputy better than I do, Sheriff. Look, I'd like you to put a trace out on a couple of fugitives here. Grover Curtis and Robert Curtis. There you go. Maybe they'll fit those extra prints I came up with. Sheriff, suppose I came to you with some cockamamie story about one of my men disappearing from a Madrid hotel. You didn't believe it for a minute. What would you have done? Gone over the room anyway. Congress Hotel last night anyway. He's having a beer? You're having a beer. You're chasing the chicks. I told you, no more chicks till Mexico. Mm -hmm. Hey, Grove? What? Well, friend, welcome to the party. Pretty badly getting out of the car. I wouldn't try walking on it if I were you. I don't suppose there's anybody here could call me a doctor. Why not? You're a doctor. <laughs> you always know, that funny in mornings. Yeah. Sometimes he's even funnier. Look, Grove. I know how you feel. I'm sorry. But why don't we just chalk it up to bad breaks and clear out while we can? Look, I, I called the hotel and told him he was going down to Tijuana. They'll be looking for him down there for quite a while. Look. He's dead. All my life, I've looked around and I've said, how come some jerk's living in a $100,000 house? Now, I'm smarter than he is. And how do these jet-set freaks bum all around the world wearing million-dollar necklaces and giving $50,000 parties? But every time I'm ready to make my move, along comes some stupid meathead and messes things up. But not this time, Bobby O. This is one little million dollar heist that nobody's gonna foul. Do you understand that? Sure, Grove. It's your party. That's right. Only you brought an extra guest along. And you're gonna get rid of him. we can do about it. We can't let him go and we can't keep him. Why can't we keep him? Where's Ringwall? Oh, well, he's over at the garage fixing the ambulance. He's painting it. Oh, Grove. You mean kill him? The old man's more trouble to us dead, isn't he? I mean, what are we gonna do with the body? Stick it in the ground. Where? I, I, we can't just go lugging it around town like a piece of it. Him anyway. You found this place. Now you find a show. No, that don't look like it. I don't know all these young squirts look alike to me. Hair down to the hips and dressed like a bunch of gypsies. 
Okay. You said that J.J. was staggering when he walked down the hall with that other man, right? Right. Drunk as a skunk. Maybe he could have been injured. How you mean? Shot? Yeah, shot, or perhaps he could have been hit on the head. Well, he did have a little blood on his head, though. Well, he got that, Dave, when he ran in that cot in the lounge, didn't he? Matter of fact, I don't think he did. Maybe you're right, maybe you're right. Maybe he wasn't drunk. He wasn't drunk in the lounge, either. Oh, come on, Dave. No, I don't believe he was. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. How come every witness I talked to said he was? You can search me, Lieutenant. You didn't talk to this witness. All right. Just what did it happen? Did he trip? Well, you might say he did in a way. He bumped into this push cart full of dishes and, well, it was the girl's fault. Just like she put out her leg and tripped him. What girl? Oh, sister. Cute little kid named Mimi. <laughs> you might say she knocked J.J. off his feet. He kept looking back at her, even after he got to the bar. Well, maybe it was somebody he recognized. Hey, this is funny. What's funny? If I wasn't crazy, I'd say this guy was in the bar last night, fooling around with Mimi. Maybe, maybe this is the fellow that J.J. was trying to look at. That makes sense. J.J. saw this fellow Curtis, recognized him. And Curtis followed him to his room. That's all guesswork. Oh, I hear that Curtis is quite a man with the girls. He's a, well, you know, if he liked her, he'll be back. Look, with all due respect to the sheriff, we don't even know whether Curtis is in L.A. Look, do you mind, please? <clears throat> Gifford. Yeah? Okay. Bad news? That was Leighton Prince. They just ran Bob Curtis's prints against the strays we found in Jackson's room. Curtis was there. Looks like your man's been kidnapped, Sheriff. Let's take out the girl's house immediately. Egan? Yes, John. I want you to check out a girl named Mimi. Works at the Tahitian Lounge Congress Hotel. Find out where she lives, take out her house. Right. Hey, Gifford? Yeah. How big is this place? Uh, Los Angeles County? Uh -huh. 4,000 square miles, 7 million people. Oh, that's quite a haystack. We'll find him. Oh, yeah, we'll find him. We'll find him. Hey, Grover! Yeah? Hey, everything cool, man? Cool as it's gonna be. Fix the lettering. Fix the siren. Uh, the paint's all dry. Did Bobby get the uniform? No, uh, not yet. Had plenty of time. Leave here at four. Give us an hour to get out the palace, Bertie. I sure hope this works, Grover. Be a breeze. The man finally died, huh? Yeah, he died. Went spotted flower. Only thing is, he just hadn't stopped breathing quite yet. You probably started bleeding again. Thank you, ma'am. You know, maybe you're different than the others. You seem different than Grover or Bob. Is that so? Different how? You're smarter. More human. What's the matter? Can't you trust a compliment? 
Or don't he ever take time to give you none? Who? That fella out there with a the shovel. Enjoy your singing, does he? I enjoy it. Oh, will you cut it out? No. No, it's beautiful. Now, don't go flying off the handle. Accept it. Like I was giving you a flower. You'd accept a flower, wouldn't you? Yeah, I guess so. Now, you see, a compliment ain't so bad once you just relax and accept it. Where'd you study? Boys? Oh, I never did. Why not? I never had any money. My dad was a fisherman. My mom worked in the canneries. Where? Vancouver, B.C. Is that where you met Grover? Yeah. He's the only guy that ever asked me out. Next thing we knew, we were married. <laughs> I tried singing for him just once. It's the night of the wedding. He uh, said it hurt his ears, so I never did it again. Well, it don't hurt my ears. Go ahead, sing something. You know, I'd like to. Later, maybe, okay? Okay. I don't know what's the matter with me. I must be getting tired or something. get to talk around here too much, I expect. No, not too much. But then maybe things will be different tomorrow. They say money makes a lot of things different. Well, it depends on how much money you come up with. Well, Grover says a necklace like that ought to bring about a million dollars. Well, we sure could use it. You ain't giving away any secrets I hadn't half figured out a long time ago. Now, you and me both know I ain't about to go out running up and down the streets screaming the news. Now, even if your men folks didn't kill me, which they will any minute now. Why do you say that? Digging stopped. <laughs> about the dumbest move they can make, killing me. Why? Well, figure it out. Right now, they got the best hostage anyone could ask for, crippled up cop. What better insurance could a gang with hot jewels have than, of course, Taylor? Been giving you trouble? No, Grove. Okay. Come on, Sheila. Let's go take a walk. alive or dead. He'd be insurance. He, what if something goes wrong and they're on to us? He'd be something to bargain with, wouldn't he? Bob, go get the uniforms. Check. And stay away from the broads. Ringwall, go with him. Oh, now, grow. come on. I'm not some kind of kid. Come on. Come on. No, thanks. 
Thanks, I'm looking for a friend. Ah, there he is. Excuse me. Well? Still no lead on Curtis. I've got to stake out in the front and back of the girl's apartment. Oh, by the way, Curtis has been there once or twice. One of the neighbors recognized him from his photo. I checked out the girl. No record. She's worked here for the last six months. She's got five or six fairly steady boyfriends. None of them have a record. Apparently, she doesn't know what she's into with Curtis. Any indication she might know Grover? No. And that brings up a very interesting point. Yeah? I went to our informants this morning, asked them to pick up whatever they could about the Curtis brothers. Now, the word is that Robert is here with Grover's wife, and Grover's on his way. And that there's a very, very big heist coming up. <sighs> Kate, look, you've probably been up all night. I know you've been here since the place opened, so why don't you grab a couple of hours of sleep? I'll stick around and... Oh, it's all right. you to wait in a car. But said, but, uh, Forget Grover. Now beat it. Okay. Okay. I want to talk to you. I thought you were supposed to call me last night. About last night. I kind of got hung up. Uh, speaking of telephone calls, I got a very funny call about you this morning. Uh, who called? Robert Curtis. Where's Jackson? Where is he? about this one? Dead. Oh, that's fine. Now we're right back where we started. No, not quite. One minute ago, they didn't know we were one half step behind them. Now they know. to get back to the States, and you blow it! Sheila, get lost. Grove, why? I mean, we're so close. What do we need Ringwald for? He, he fixed the ambulance. Bobby can drive it, can't he? Share. We, we, we don't have to split. How many have you committed? They got Ringwall. They know where we're at. They know where we're going. Well, if they know so much, why aren't they here? Well, we haven't talked yet. He will. Maybe he's dead. Oh, he can't count on that. If he ain't dead and does talk, you're going to need a hostage more than ever. Your brother told you the Sam Cage's in Los Angeles. Now, he ain't going to do anything that might hurt me if he knows I'm still alive. Well, what would you like me to do, old man? Send him a signed affidavit? Nope. Unless you got the brains of a fanny rooster, you might consider giving him a call. Give him a call? And just where do I call him? I don't know. Police headquarters. Oh, sure. So they can trace a number, right? Nobody's tracing nothing, dumb dumb. Wouldn't be on the line long enough for that. Grove, don't listen oh, to him. Oh, shut up. Cause enough trouble. Let Grove. Let all of you just shut up. <laughs> you know, that idea is just crazy enough. It just might work. You know they got to have a dragnet out in every stoolie in town looking for it. Okay. <laughs> okay, old man. You may have just bought yourself a little more time. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, may I have the number for police headquarters, please? 
His name is Kenneth Walter Ringwald. He went to Canada in 1969. Apparently, that's where he met the Curtises. Good driver. Drove for a couple of jewel heists down here at one time, as a matter of fact. There's one more little piece of crazy information we came up with. Ringwald had an address in his pocket, a used car lot. He bought a second-hand ambulance four days ago. Yeah. Excuse me, there's a call for Sheriff Kate on line three. Mass had to tell you it's Grover. Grover? Put a tape and trace on it. Use that phone. It's gotta be a gag. What are they trying to pull? I'll just play the cards they're dealt, Lieutenant. Hello? Sam? Grover Curtis. Where's Jackson? Is he alive? Oh, he's alive. You think we'd harm a hair on that old gray head? Shut that damn window. All right, now look, we want to get out of L.A. Call off your dogs, all of them, 24 hours. Yeah, we're going to keep the old gentleman with us. We're far enough away, we'll let him go, and you can pick him up. Or what? Now, we don't want to have to kill the old gentleman. How do I know you haven't already killed him? Say hello. Hello, Sam. It's me. Okay. Okay. 24 hours. Hey, now, listen. Egan, what about the trace? Okay, bring in the tape. Not enough time. All right, let's hear it. Sam? Grover Curtis. Where's Jackson? Is he alive? Oh, he's alive. You think we'd harm a hair on that old gray head? Shut that damn window. Oh, stop right there. And I'll go back to the last stretch without the voice. He's alive. Right, now listen to that. I think we'd harm a sound like a kind of a chop, head. chop there. Shut that damn window. All right, raise the volume up. Hold it. Well? Helicopter? Fred Gifford. I want to report on every helicopter airborne over Los Angeles about, oh, about 3.45 this afternoon, give or take a minute, okay? Well, don't tell me how long it takes. Do it. Hey, see, you hear that sort of like a hum in the background? What is it? Is it the ocean? Running tide? Ice surf? What is it? All right. No, no. One more time. Quit harm a hair on that old gray head. Shut that... It's a new sound to me. You know what I think? I think it's a freeway. Have to be an awfully overcrowded one. Well, then that bell doesn't make sense. Could it be a railway intersection? Oh, it's a railway, all right. A switch engine. But how does that fit in with a freeway? I don't know. But let's find out. Why not? Well, this thing is precise. It's got to be right on the nose. Well, if Ringwall could do it, why couldn't Look, I? dummy. A Ringwall, you're not. He was a pro. Guys like you make mistakes. He and I have been over this plant a dozen times. We made six or seven dry runs. He knows how to handle wheels. Drive without calling attention to us, and he was loose. I'll, I'll throw. I'll be loose, okay? I'll be cool. I'll be relaxed. I'll be about as relaxed as a banjo string. I'll be fine. I'll get over it. You'll see. You know, it, it's kind of like a, a ball player. A guy might be uptight right until the end, and then he's going to be okay. Look, you should have been in all the meetings. You should have been on the dry runs. So for all this chasing around. Bro, I'll be fine if you just ease off. Look, I'm going to ease off as soon as you deserve it. Right now, you're 180 pounds of dead weight. Saddling me with the old man, getting my driver shot. But I can handle it, Grove. No kidding. You'll see. Look, up. Have you I'll got the whole route in your head? Well, sure. I, do you want me to tell it back to you? It's a little 
late for that now, isn't it, Bobby O? Well, let's go. Sweet, I crack the wall safe. Now, anybody starts running or screaming, you chop, understand? Well, you didn't see what happens after. I mean, what happens if the, if the lady and the other guests recognize us? I mean, we're not even wearing masks or anything. You don't worry yourself about that, Bobby. Oh. Now, let's not get too close. Sheriff, if they make a break for it, we got to be in position. We got to hit them fast. Look, I don't want to alert them. Now, look, if there's a choice between them getting nervous and killing JJ and running, we let them run now. Is that understood? Will you listen to me? Life doesn't mean anything to these guys. They probably chopped your deputy the minute they hung up that phone. Hostages just don't live long, Sheriff. Oh, really? Okay. We'll try one more beach your way. Back off, Max. Unit 2685, police chopper, B-304. 304. This is the house, Lieutenant. Any sign of JJ? Did you find the hostage? We found a grave in the backyard. But it's empty. Oh, Lieutenant, we found a painter's lettering stencil. It's been used. What are the letters? Now, when 
you get to it, stay in the right-hand lane till you're through the interchange. Then it's a straight shot ahead. I ain't the only one that's gonna kill, you know. Anyone that happens to be in that house is gonna die, too. Now, Grove wouldn't do that. I suppose you're just gonna stand by and let him. You've come a long way from Vancouver, Sheila. You keep still! We're only after the diamonds. Okay, we've laid down the APB. Now we just have to hang on until... Lieutenant, this is Egan. I'm in Central Dispatch. We just got to confirm on Bay Area Ambulance. A CHP unit spotted him on the Harbor Freeway, just south of the Santa Monica Freeway. Tell him not to approach. Sergeant, relay, do not intercept. Do not approach. Understood, Lieutenant. Under the overpass and on the ground line. Hey, right on time, Fabio. Hey, Grove. Hmm? That way patrolman back there looked us over pretty good. Why not? For angels of mercy. That's the interchange, Lieutenant. Let's go. Right, there's 
Officer Guard. Let me do the talking. No matter what happens, you keep moving. Emergency main house, Mrs. Wellman. Trouble just shooting. You ain't gonna do it, Sheila. You didn't save my life back in that house just to kill me here. You got more to you than them out there. fuss was about? <laughs> you know something? I can't let him out of my sight a second. This here is Sheila. She sort of saved my life. Of course, I expect you had something to do with it, too, Sam. Hmm. Hey, you look a little banged up there, J.J. Banged up? I'm lucky I'm still alive. I've never seen anything to match this Los Angeles. Absolutely uncivilized out here, Sam. Max, call in all the unmarked units and take Sheriff Cade and Deputy Jackson downtown and see that he gets some medical attention. Oh, Sam, hmm? hang in down there for a little while, okay? I'd, uh, I'd like to buy you a beer. No, no, I'm buying. I owe you that much. <laughs> 